Hey guys, jadi sekarang kita punya momen spesial banget karena film How to Make Millions Before Grandma Day lagi viral banget di Indonesia. Jadi uh, gue punya kesempatan menarik di mana gue langsung datang ke kantor Falcon karena sutradaranya langsung ke Indonesia. Jadi datang langsung dari Thailand langsung ke Indonesia. Jadi uh, tantengin terus video ini sampai selesai. Pastikan kalian nonton karena ada beberapa pertanyaan yang menarik banget untuk uh, kita kuliah bareng gitu ya. Inilah dia sutradara dari How to Make Millions Before Grandma Day yaitu Mr. Pat Budetipat. Halo Mister, welcome to Indonesia. Uh, this is first time you in Indonesia. Right? Yes. Uh, bagaimana pendapat anda tentang Indonesia sejauh ini? Oh, uh, actually I I was in Bali, but I was really small. I don't remember much. Uh, so, but th- but this is my first time in Jakarta. No. Oh. And I feel maybe because I was welcomed by so many people to mm-hmm. then love the films. So I feel like I feel like I'm in Thailand. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's like old, yeah, very warm. Mm, do you do you eat some food in Indonesia? Yes, I try to try many food mm. in Indonesia. Nasi goreng, nasi goreng. Of oh, course. <laughs> Jadi dia nyobain nasi goreng, guys. Suatu kehormatan bagi kami uh, datang uh, anda datang ke Indonesia karena di sekarang tuh film anda How to Make Millions Before Grandma Day itu lagi viral banget di Indonesia. Semua orang buat tren before uh, after watching uh, How to Make Millions Before Grandma Day. Bagaimana pendapat anda setelah mendengar uh, film anda itu viral di negara lain? Uh, I feel less, yeah. and I feel that it's my honor to to make a film, to do the thing that I I try to do best, and it turns out that people share like it. It's it's it makes me really happy, and uh, coming here and see the reaction of you of the people. It's yeah, it's really good experience as a filmmaker. Oke, okay. mungkin untuk sebagian uh, orang di Indonesia belum terlalu mengenal anda gitu ya. Sejauh ini perjalanan karir anda sebelum anda membuat film yang sangat viral ini bagaimana? Bisa anda jelaskan secara singkat karir anda selama ini sebelum anda sampai ke How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies? I'm pretty actually I'm a pretty late. I started to get interest in filmmaking while I was in university. Yeah. which is almost like 20 in my 20s but all of my friends start earlier than that maybe like 15 or even 10 or something like that so uh, I try to work very hard to compensate for the time that I start late so uh, I work in several things like documentaries yeah. I wanted to be a cameraman okay. in uh, digital photography and uh, I want to make fiction fiction uh, TV series. I did make one. Uh, what I I did make one documentaries and two TV series. The two. Uh, the first one is SOS Kid, and the second one is Bad Genius the series. Also, but not as popular as mm-hmm. this one. Uh, yeah, and and all of those work led me to direct my first feature film, which is How to Make Million for Grand and Nice. Yeah. Sebenarnya untuk saya pribadi uh, tahu anda itu dari Ben Genius series. Di situ anda tuh keren banget development karakter, bagaimana ceritanya itu keren banget. Pertanyaan aku adalah anda kan biasa menggarap series. Bagaimana tantangannya dalam membuat uh, series uh, dan membuat sebuah film? Bisa anda jelaskan secara singkat? Mainly the obstruction of TV series for me is the length of it because it's so long. There are many episodes, yeah, but the story is continuously throughout every episode. So the plot and the character development must be very precise while it has to be very captivating. It's very hard to make a TV series that's a slow burn. Yeah, I am right. Mm-hmm. You have to be very captivating. And me personally, I like after making the first feature film, I think personally, I'm, I'm more suitable for movie, which is shorter, yeah, yeah, shorter form. But the obstruction in making movie is, it's for me, it's like it's not really obstruction, but you have to find what's really good for the stories yes. before writing it down. You, if if you come up with a scene that is not really good. It will make the whole we drop so easy, which is unlike TV series. Some scenes can be not very good, but 
the whole structure can still carry it. Dan saya tahu Anda juga seorang penulis skenario. Menurut Anda sejauh ini Anda kan menjadi sutradara yang benar-benar sekarang Anda kan baru debut tapi boom, film Anda itu langsung viral. Dan menurut Anda mana yang terbaik dalam membuat skenario atau menjadi seorang sutradara? Hmm, actually I like directing more but uh I have to write the script too because uh in Thailand hmm. the truth is that we still have so few numbers of screenwriters oh. that work professionally which makes it very difficult to to find a story that already worked by itself so if you want to direct a film which you believe is good i think writing being a part of the writing process really helps creating that kita kan di sini melihat anda membuat film how to make a uh, grand mandarin benar-benar kayak uh, benar-benar keren. Saya sangat suka bagaimana development karakter from uh, dari awal sampai akhir. Berapa lama proses Anda mereset uh, film ini sehingga menjadi film sekeren sekarang ini? Uh, we took about two years. Two years. Screenwriting, only screenwriting for two years, and uh, and the production process, like casting, like scouting location and shooting and post production take another one year. So three years in total. Wow, three years, tiga tahun guys. Nah, in this movie uh, di How to Make Millions Before Game Monday itu ada karakter Amar. Uh, dia juga debut film di film ini kan. Uh, di mana anda menemukan ibu Parubaya ini kok bisa ditemukan dan sekeren ini bakatnya? Bagaimana cara anda menemukan karakter Amar ini? Uh, we pray. <laughs> yes, as it be because it was. Such an coincidence cool because we mean keeping, we found Bilkin first, mm-hmm. and then we have to look for Amma, which suit him really well. The chemistry we take such a long time. I think maybe like four months, four months, and like looking for Amma, uh, and it's such a coincidence cool that Amma was she worked that uh, she star in the music video five years ago. Oh, but a uh, very very independent for very independent band very niche and the assistant director of that music video is also my assistant director for this movie so he was like looking through every granny he was working. <laughs> yes and he found her mm-hmm. and he kept kept the screen captured the screen and sent it to me at all oh, i know her but you want to try her i see her and then oh she she looked her look is interesting so let's tape her and that's how we found her. Wow. Eh uh, Anda pasti tahu kalau sutradara itu kebanyakan memang enggak berani mengambil resiko dengan aktor baru. Bagaimana Anda kayak mempertaruhkan si Ama ini dengan film Anda yang fokus ke development karakter acting? Bagaimana Anda berani mempertaruhkan itu apalah uh, keputusan Anda pada saat itu meyakinkan rumah produksi dan sebagainya bagaimana pendapat Anda? Surprisingly the idea of using the the one who never act mm. not like professional actress came from producer oh. our producer read the script and they both felt that it would feel more real mm. to cast someone who never been in any any film before or didn't have any idea about acting before at first i heard about that idea i was hesitate because milkin if my It's Bilkin first movie. Mm. My first movie. Oh yeah, of course. It if it will be my first movie too. <laughs> no, like <laughs> is it too much to handle? <laughs> yeah. But uh, after we do the casting, and uh, and uh, when we there's a few tapes that we did tape the professional actor, which is for for grandma. Few of them who really like have a lot of experience acting. Hmm. It didn't give that natural vibe yeah, and the one who never act before. So I was seeing, oh, okay, the direction that the producer gave is, is interesting. So we keep looking after and we keep looking for the one who never act before. Yeah, aku menurut saya karir uh, Ama dan juga Anda kayaknya ke depan bakal keren banget dan selamat atas film ini. Dan uh, saya menonton ini benar-benar uh, loros, uh, perasaan tuh kayak roller coaster, uh, sad, uh, funny gitu. Bagaimana Anda menggabungkan 
momen uh, serius, sedih, dan juga komedi dalam satu film sehingga bisa kayak sealami ini. Saya sangat suka dengan film ini. It's very good question. Personally, I never made a comedy film before. Yeah. I make thriller and drama and really intense emotion film or TV series. So I have no idea I could do comedy. But uh, during the writing, I have uh, my scriptwriter. He's really he did comedy. He did some comedy before, but not this time of comedy. He didn't like a very joke, joke uh, like straightforward joke comedy. But this movie, we were talking a lot about how to make it more light. Because actually, the subject itself and the character, no, the subject itself is very intense. If you direct, you can like easily switch from from lightness to a very heavy film. Because the it's very tragic. Yeah, yes. actually, the story is tragic, but uh, so I insist on on putting the direction that is very light to to keep to balance yeah, really. the the feeling between tragic and 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 lightness. Because uh, once if you do for me once for me when I watch very heavy film, I don't want to rewatch it again. And I don't want this film to be like that. I want this film to be the film that people can yes. watch it how many times they want, and it gives back the positive feeling for them. So uh, when we think about the scene, when we think about the dialogue, we try to not adding the joke, but we try to be positive and be real about what these characters are thinking. I mean, it's tragic from the point of view. Of people who perceive the story, but from the character itself, that's left in the story, especially Aman, mm. my especially Aman in the film, and also my grandmother. They never, I got the impression that they never actually see their life as a tragic event. They try to get by, they try to distract themselves. Maybe in my opinion, maybe because that what they has been doing. Learning has been learning to do from the the social context that's given to them in their generation. Wow, pantas uh, anda menjadi uh, saudara yang keren banget dan menurut saya anda adalah satu salah satu aset uh, saudara yang keren di Asia di masa depan. Apakah ada target anda dalam karir anda saudara ber- bakal buat berapa film selanjutnya? Apakah ada target tertentu? Actually. Before this, making this film, I was doing two TV series, right? Yes. And those two TV series taught me that it's to be a filmmaker is so hard. Life is so hard being a filmmaker yeah. because of time and everything. But uh, after making this movie, because it's my first time making movie when it's shorter and you have like, and the first the restriction using. To make this film, I talked to the producer from the day one that I don't want to like compress the time while we are writing or even the shooting. Yeah, yeah. I want it to be. I I want it to feel loose in every process that we make this film. So I didn't get that much stress as I did it for from in from my previous previous film. And uh, so and after it's done during the process. I really enjoyed it. Yes, and my team also enjoyed it, and we all enjoyed it, uh, and we are really happy with the result. And even when it's shown in Thailand and here, the first place abroad, it makes me feel like all oh, because the process of the making was was done so differently from the thing that I did, already did. The way you think about the blocking, the way you think about the shot planning, the way you think about working with cast and crew. It's so different, and uh, which I had never really thought like this before. So, and when it's done, I'm happy with the result. The audience is happy with the result. So when it all come back to me, what I learned is that all the film can be done this way. Yes. It, but I didn't did I didn't do it this way before. So when I found out this method, this method of working, it makes me want to make film the game. Wow. Menjelang ke pertanyaan terakhir, apakah anda pernah menonton film Indonesia sebelumnya? Actually, I did. It's uh, in Adikor. Yeah, it's in Adikor. It's very scary. Wow. <laughs> I like it so much. 
actually the director of the Impedicor is a friend of director of the media. Oh yeah, Joko Anwar, yeah. Uh, uh, Joko Anwar. Anwar. And uh, Ban Jong, the director of the yeah. media, always tell me, watch this, watch this, he's so good. So I watched Impedicor because the only one available in Netflix in Thailand. But yeah, yeah. I like it so much. Wow. Nah, kalau anda pernah menonton film Indonesia, apakah ke depan misalnya ada rumah produksi Indonesia yang pengen ngajak kerjasama, apakah anda pengen menggarap film Indonesia tapi dengan gaya anda? Uh, of course, it'll be my honor. I'm, I'll be interested. But uh, for me, it's it will be like my that, that I'll be honoring the offer. Yeah. But but for me, to make a film, it's to really understand the subject. Yes. that I'm making. So we have to see case by case. Yeah. Now what, what story is that offer? Uh, thank you Mr. Pan dan terima kasih. Mungkin cuma itu sih sebenarnya ada banyak banget yang pengen aku tanyain tapi mungkin keterbatasan waktu. Semoga uh, karir Anda semakin melesat. Oke okay, guys, thank you buat teman-teman yang udah nonton wawancara ini karena seru banget dan buat teman-teman yang mungkin masih penasaran dengan film ini, silakan kalian uh, mungkin kita bisa diskusi di kolom komentar di bawah dan Jelasnya kalian yang belum nonton wajib banget buat nonton ke bioskop karena film How to Make Millions Before Greenman ini lagi tayang di bioskop dan layarnya makin banyak guys. Uh, dan thank you betul-betul menyaksikan video ini sampai selesai. Thank you dan sampai jumpa kembali.